New York City, put your hands together and make some noise for Dave Smith. Thank you very much. New York City, what the fuck is going on? How is everybody? Feeling good? Hell yeah. Yeah. The world is going crazy. It's hard to keep up because things are too weird. I'll try to keep you guys up to speed, okay? If you're not up to date. Uh, Kanye West <laughs> loves Jews. <laughs> yeah, you guys probably thought he still hated Jews, but that's just because you're not up to date. He loves Jews. You gotta follow him on Twitter to keep up, but this is true. Kanye West tweeted that he saw 21 Jump Street and it was so funny that now he loves Jewish people. I'm, I'm a Jew. I'm not a good Jew. I know I'm not a good Jew because when Kanye tweeted that he doesn't hate Jewish people anymore, I swear to God, my initial gut reaction was like, you fucking caved, you bitch. You know? Like, I thought we were going for it, man. What the fuck happened? I was so disappointed. Did you see when Con Did you follow him when he went on his three-week I Hate the Jews fest? It was so awesome. I'm not saying everything he said was right, but it was fun, and it took balls. I respect courage. And I think we don't have enough of it today. There's not enough men who demonstrate courage, and Kanye demonstrated a lot. He lost over a billion dollars of net worth just because he had to tell the world <laughs> that he fucking hates Jews. When was the last time you believed in anything that much? <laughs> I have deeply held views that I would abandon for $35 right now. <laughs> You gave me a 20, a 10, and a 5, and I'd be like, I'll think about it. <laughs> and it was so much fun. It, you see, he went on Alex Jones' show. Did you watch that? Do you know how fucking hard you gotta go to make Alex Jones the voice of reason in a conversation? <laughs> like, how f fucking far you gotta take it before Alex Jones is like, I wouldn't go that far. I <laughs> Alex Jones was all nervous and shit. He was trying to throw Kanye lifelines, like, <laughs> he's like, he says he loves Adolf Hitler, he doesn't really love Adolf Hitler, you know, he doesn't mean that. And Kanye's like, I do love Adolf Hitler, motherfucker. <laughs> I, like, Oof. I loved it. I thought it was great. People got very offended. I don't understand, that doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me to be offended by a rapper. You know what I mean? Like, rappers say wild shit. That's what they do. Maybe it's me, I don't know. I'm from a different time. I'm from a far away magical time known as the 1990s. That's, where, that's my time. That's the last time things made sense to me. And in the 90s, you didn't get offended by rappers. That would be ridiculous. Rappers say crazy shit. They're like, fuck the police. Cheese up, hose down. You know? No one's ever like, that's very offensive to the hose. Or, you'd be like, I don't think you get it. Now people get offended, but I don't know. That didn't fuck with me. What fucked with me was that the day before Kanye did Alex Jones' show, he had dinner with Donald Trump. That fucks with me. The fact that rappers meet with presidents. But that's where we're at now, America. Rappers meet with presidents. Kanye met with Trump. Cardi B went to the White House and met with Joe Biden. But yeah, that happened. <laughs> Before Trump, Common and Jay-Z both went to the White House and they met with Barack Obama. That's where we're at as a country. Rappers meet with presidents. And then the president is like, what do you think I should do? <laughs> and the rapper's like, well, buckle up, because I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> And the president's like, thank God, I am fresh out of ideas. I have no clue what I'm doing here. That's weird to me. 
In the 90s, rappers didn't meet with presidents. Rappers stayed in their lane, and presidents stayed in their lane. Rappers were gangsters. Presidents were presidents. They didn't mix. You remember, any, any of you guys like around my age, like kids during the 90s? Do you, rem do, you, do you remember how gangster rappers were in the 90s? They were so hardcore. Yeah, maybe they weren't, but we believed it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. You ever see like a, a gangster rapper from the 90s and you see the shit they're doing today? Like the ones who lived. You see the shit they're doing today and it just fucks you up because you can't even believe it. You know, you see like Snoop Dogg and he's like hanging out with Justin Bieber. And like in your heart, you're like, Snoop Doggy Dog? You should be stabbing Justin Bieber. Like, what are you doing? You guys are friends? I thought murder was the case. Like, what the fuck happened, dude? Was it all bullshit? Because if so, I want my money back. Like, I paid $12.99 for Doggy Style in 1994. That's like $93 today. I want it back. Rap, hip hop was gangster in the 90s. It was so gangster. Like, if you don't remember, go back and listen to like a gangster rap album in the 90s. But not like you do today. Like today you listen to it on the internet and you just hear the songs. Go listen to the album. Like the full album. This is what you forget, okay? Half of their albums, it wasn't even music. Like, go listen to like a Biggie Smalls album. Half the album was music and the other half was like interludes where they were just doing gangster shit. <laughs> like if you listen to a Biggie Smalls album, track one would be like a song, track two will be a song, track three, he'll just murder somebody. <laughs> like, track three is just like, die motherfucker, die. <laughs> then track four would be a song, track five would be like a voicemail. <laughs> like, it, like it would, uh, <laughs> like track five would just be like, boop, and they'd be like, Biggie, I wanna suck your dick. And then, just to let you know, gangster shit was happening in his world. That's how gangster it was in the 90s. You couldn't just make an album full of music. Like, we would listen to it and we'd be like, all right, these are pretty great songs, but like, this guy hasn't killed anyone, he hasn't gotten his dick sucked. Why am I buying the album, you know? Shit was real. Everything kind of made sense to me in the 90s. Like, I just felt like everything was where it was supposed to be. Like, rappers were rappers. Presidents were presidents. Boys were boys. Girls were girls. Like, they didn't switch, you know what I mean? It's now, I don't even know the world I'm living in anymore. I don't understand it. Like, people have these heated debates and they're furious at each other about things we never even thought of. Like, they're, they're debating transgenders and women's sports. That's a real debate that's happening across the country, and people are at each other's throats. Like, the right-wingers are like, that's a biological man, he can't compete in women's sports. And then the left-wingers are like, what do you mean that's a man? That's a beautiful woman with a penis. And like, they're <laughs> furious, just arguing with each other. And I'm just sitting here and I'm like, can we all just take a deep breath and take a step back and just return to a simpler time when we had consensus on this issue? And we all agreed that we don't care about women's sports. <laughs> like, what? Why is it even a thing? When did we start letting them do it? I don't remember, but it's ridiculous. Do you know what we used to say about the WNBA in 1995? Nothing, we didn't have a WNBA in 1995. And we all got along just fine. I never watched Jordan dunk on some dude, and then I was like, something's missing, you know? I was, that was pretty cool, but I would like to see a lady try a layup after this. That would, just to bring this whole thing home. <laughs> Nothing is where it's supposed to be anymore, including me. I'm also not where I'm supposed to be. I know I'm not. Cause like I'm objectively, what I am is I'm a 40 year old dad. And I feel like as a 40 year old dad, I should be looking at the younger generation. Like I should look at a 20 year old kid and I think I should feel like, I should be like, whoa, these kids are wild. Like that's the natural order. 
is a 40-year-old dad looks at a 20-year-old kid and goes, these kids are out of control. But I'm not doing that. I'm a 40-year-old dad and I'm looking at these 20-year-old kids and I'm like, could you stop being such a fucking faggot for like five seconds? For five seconds. Like, try a drug. Fuck something, you know? Skin your knee, young man. Is what I say. And then that 20-year-old is like, did you just say faggot? That's a very offensive word. And I'm like, you're lecturing me about the impact of my words? You're 20. This is ridiculous. I should be doing, I'm the dad. Like, we should switch. I, uh, I did that joke two weeks ago in San Francisco. And I'm not gonna lie. You guys were way cooler than they were. You guys were way cooler than San Francisco. And, uh, it was pretty unanimous in San Francisco that everyone was like, you are not allowed to say that word anymore. You just, you're not allowed to say that word. And I know, but I'm not gonna stop. Well, cause it's a great word. And I'm a product of my time. You know, I don't think it's reasonable to expect people to change. You, you're supposed to stay locked in your time. Like, remember when you were a kid and like your grandpa would say some fucked up shit, but you don't like hate him because he's your grandpa and he's old. You know, you'd be sitting around the table and your grandpa's like, I saw a Chinaman today. And you're like, oh, all right. But you're not like mad at him, he's 80. Okay, well, I'm half of that. And so I'm locked in my time. I say faggot occasionally. And I say retarded a lot. <laughs> I just can't stop. I, it's, it's, retarded is like a filler for me. It's like my um. Like, if you're like, what time's the show tonight, Dave? Oh, like, retarded eight? Uh, it's just, I don't know. I say faggot and I say retarded and I'm not gonna stop. And I will die on that hill. Yeah. Oh, well. Next year, you guys are gonna be like, how come Dave's not doing another special this year? And someone will be like, oh, you didn't hear? Yeah, he died on retard faggot hill. That's what happened to Dave. But he died doing what he loves, you know? He said he was happy to die on that hill. So what are you gonna do? I say faggot and I say retarded. I do not say the N word in my standup. I do not, and I want to, but I don't. <laughs> Every minute I'm up here, I'm fighting the urge. Like, don't do it, Dave. Don't do it. And I don't say the N-word for one simple reason. Because those were the rules in the 90s. And I'm a product of my time. I can't... I have to follow 90s code. I, I was a kid in the 1990s. I wasn't a kid in the 1920s. Back then, you could say whatever the fuck you wanted to say. People be like, you can say anything? Like, what did the women think? And you're like, they're not allowed out of the house. You know? <laughs> it was a better time, but it wasn't my time. But it was... The rules in the 1990s were there's one word. There's one word you're not allowed to say, and that's the N word. And it was a little ridiculous. It didn't completely make sense to treat one word like it's Voldemort, you know? But you can't say the word, but you can say the letter N and then the word, word, and then everybody thinks the word in their head, but somehow black people are still like, I appreciate you, dude, that was cool. Right. <laughs> but it kind of made sense. It kind of made sense to make the N word the word, because it was like a recognition. It was like, okay, look, slavery is the original sin. Like, that's the original sin of America. And it's been going on forever. Like, black people were fucked over in this country before it was even a country. Since the 1600s, black people were slaves, and that was the word they got called while they were slaves, and so that's the one word we're not allowed to say. Fine. You know? But these faggots just got here. You get my point? Like, put in some time. Quite frankly, I think it's insulting to black people that you think you should get a word. You're a bunch of racist gays, if you ask me. Whatever, this is what comedy used to be in the 90s. What the fuck happened to us? 
We used to have fun. No one was, everyone wasn't so sensitive. And now, and now everyone's fucking offended all the time. And also the country's falling apart. So maybe it's not the best fucking plan, you know? Maybe this didn't work out so well. This fuck, and this country is falling apart. We're all living through it. This shit is collapsing fast. I, I think COVID really exposed it. COVID's where we found out that shit is really not stable. Because it was kind of like a stress test for America, you know? It was like you throw a crisis at your country and then you see where you're at and we didn't do good. <laughs> they threw a crisis at us and our grade was full-blown retard. That's what our score was on COVID. We just did stupid shit and we just kept doing it. It was like around, I think it was in April or May of 2020 when they had these three big studies that came out and they all showed that the cloth masks don't do anything. They don't help you avoid COVID at all. And as a country, we were just like, well, we're already doing it. So we're gonna keep doing it for several years, probably. Oh, I hated the fucking mask phase. I hated that. I didn't wanna wear them. I just hate, I just not. I'm not like even saying I'm better than anyone. Even before those studies came out, when I thought the masks might work, I still didn't want to wear them. Like even when I thought I might be killing an old lady, I was like, she's had a good run, you know? Like, I don't know what to tell you. I can't breathe my hot breath all day. But back then I was tolerant. Like I was tolerant of people who wore the mask. Like I, was, I just wanted to be free. I was like, listen, I don't want to wear the mask, but if you want to wear the mask and that makes you feel more comfortable, then fine, you wear it, but I won't wear it. Let's not judge each other. Everyone's fine, you know? But, oh, I changed. Now, when I see someone who's still wearing a mask, like you see someone outside wearing a mask, and I'm like, I'm gonna rip that fucking mask off your face and spit right down your throat. That's what I'm gonna do. And then be like, all right, it's not gonna get any worse than that. So you okay, you over it? Did I snap you out of it? The fuck happened to you? <laughs> COVID was insane. We just did stupid shit. People did it differently. I was traveling a lot during COVID. So like I'd go to places that were doing it all different. You know, you'd be in New York and they'd just be crazy about it. They'd be like, you gotta be socially distanced and put your mask on and take 16 vaccines and all that shit, you know? And <laughs> I know. That gets weird, because a lot of you people took the vaccine. I know you did. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make fun of you. If you took the vaccine, I'm not making fun of you. Like, you're gonna die, but I'm not gonna make fun of you. I would never make fun of someone with six months to live. So, that's... But that's how they were in New York, they were crazy. Then I'd travel around, I went to Florida, and they weren't even aware a pandemic was happening in Florida. They were like, what are you talking about? We would've heard. And they did better than New York. Isn't that crazy? That's, the, that's where we're at as a country. We had a crisis. We put our best and brightest minds up to the challenge and they lost to Florida. <laughs> that is not a healthy sign for a civilization. I apologize for every Florida joke I ever told in my life. And everyone just collectively freaked out for years and then at a certain point, we just kind of stopped. We just stopped doing it. And there's still COVID. I'm positive right now, you know? It's just like, no one cares anymore. We just stopped and we're like, I don't know, I guess we're over it. It's... We're in trouble. I don't mean to be like a downer up here. Like everything's gonna be fine. You know, Biden's got it under control. I just, I'm saying there's some issues that we're facing. But Joe Biden, you look at him and you're like, finally, someone with a firm grasp of the issues is at the helm. I trust him. I trust him to take us home. I like Joe Biden as president. I do. And I mean that. I'm not being sarcastic. I actually really love him as president. I, I think he's the man for the job. He's the perfect, he is the perfect representation of where we're at as a society. If someone who didn't know anything about America was like, where's America at right now? You'd be like, right there. That's where we're at. This president made of tissue paper is basically, that's what we've got for you. Whew. He is old. It's unbelievable. Like I know you, you guys here, you know me. Like I fucking, I'm not, 
people sometimes I'll make jokes about Biden or whatever, and they try to size you up, like, what team are you on? But then I have to tell them that I, like, I think both your teams are retarded, you know? Like, my team, like, my, my team is the team that thinks all politicians are criminals. That's my team. Is that's, what it is. Uh, they're all blood-soaked monsters. Uh, and I, more people should join that team. We're a good team. We've got a good roster. But I don't hate Joe Biden. Like, I hate every president of my lifetime. I can't, I can't get myself to hate Joe Biden. Joe Biden is the first president I've ever genuinely felt bad for. Like, I think it's wrong that we're making him do this. Clearly against his will. Like, you know he doesn't want to be president. You know every morning Joe Biden wakes up and he's like, please don't make me president today. Please. And then his wife is like, you get out there and you fucking president right now. And he's like, okay. And then he doesn't know what he's doing. He never knows which direction to exit in. And you know that's all they talk to him about before the speech. They're like, just read the words in front of you and then exit left. And he reads the words, and then he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> shit, they said exit something. I don't know. And he's always like doing this shit. It's just horrible. It's awful to watch. He does this thing, and I've never seen another politician do this, ever. Joe Biden does it a lot. But he does this thing where he'll start saying something, and then like he starts saying something, and then he, he like stutters and stumbles, and then he just bails on what he was saying. Like he just pretends it didn't happen. You know what I mean? Like he'll start a sentence and he gets like halfway through the sentence and then he has a moment where he's like, look, we all know I'm not gonna finish this sentence. So I'm just gonna pull the parachute on this bitch. I'm hitting eject right now and we're gonna move on to something else. You know, he's just like, he's like, we, we all know how it goes, you know. We, we hold these truths to be self-evident. You know the thing. And then he's just like, on to the next thing. And you're like, I do know the thing. I don't think you know the thing, motherfucker. I'm gonna need you to tell me the thing. But he's not gonna. <laughs> he's the president, and he's running for re-election. And the uh, top candidate uh, who he's running against is Donald Trump. That's where we're at. We're, it's Trump versus Biden, part two. This time, older, fatter, and more retarded. That's America's slogan. This is... We, we were like, no, those are, those are still the best guys we could find. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to run it back. That's where we're at. And Dave Smith! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Nah. <laughs> I'll just keep doing this. Seems safer. I don't even know what to think about Donald Trump anymore. It's hard for me to even pro... I used to have an opinion about him, but now I have to like reevaluate everything. I don't, I'm not even sure if it was real. Like, was it all a dream? Did that really happen? Like Donald Trump, what? Donald Trump dipped his toe into politics and on his first shot became president of the United States of America. Did I imagine that or did it really happen? I don't even know how to feel about him. Like, I used to think he was an idiot, but now looking back on it, I'm pretty sure he was a genius. <laughs> like, I feel like I was in an abusive relationship, and then I got out of it, and now I've had some time, and I'm looking back on it, and I'm like, was I the asshole? <laughs> like, it might have been me. Did I provoke him? <laughs> I used to think he was an idiot. I re you remember you used to like come up with nicknames for everybody? I remember watching the first time uh, he came up with his nickname for Joe Biden. The first time he ever came up with his nickname for Joe Biden, I was watching, and he was like, who am I running against? Sleepy Joe? And, 
the first time I heard it, I was like, dude, what are you, fucking retarded? Like, really? What are you, in the third grade? Like, you're the president of the United States of America. That was the best you could come up with, Sleepy Joe? This is so dumb. But now, every time I see Joe Biden, I'm like, this motherfucker is sleepy. I mean, look at him. He's exhausted. Let him take a nap. Like, what are you doing to him? <laughs> Trump is an interesting guy. And the, the response to him is really interesting. It's very revealing. Because they're all so scared of him. And these are like the most powerful people. Like, all of the most powerful people in the country are terrified of Donald Trump. Which shows how weak they are. Because, like, what are you so scared of? He's Trump, he's 80, and fat, and orange, and retarded. Like, he's like a fucking cartoon character. He's, his hair and skin is not the color of any human being you've ever seen. And they're like, when you watch Trump on the news, it's like you're watching CNN, and then a cartoon character comes onto the screen. Like, you're watching fucking Roger Rabbit or some shit. And this guy terrifies them. They're like, he could ruin all of us. And they're right. Donald Trump's an alpha. That's how he, run, he runs off instinct. Everything's a gut reaction. Donald Trump's never read a book about nothing. That's nerd shit. He saw a show about it and he knows how he feels, you know? <laughs> That's it. He's a, there was a big scandal a few months back when they raided uh, Trump's house and they found a copy of Mein Kampf. And everyone was like, oh my God, what's he doing with a copy of Adolf Hitler's book in his house? And you're like, yeah, but he didn't read it. You know what I mean? Like, does, does anyone here think he read it? Like, no, he just, he liked the color. So he bought it. <laughs> Donald Trump doesn't need to do that shit. He just bullies people. He doesn't need, and do you remember what he would do to these guys? This is why they're so scared. Cause he would fuck them up. Do you remember what he did to Elizabeth Warren? He took that bitch's soul. Like, she used to be a respected senator. And then Donald Trump just called her Pocahontas every day for like four years. And you can never look at her the same. You can never, every now and then I'll still see Elizabeth Warren on television, you know, and she'll be like, I have a proposal, you know, and you're like, shut up, Pocahontas. No one cares about your dumbass proposal. So the story, if you don't know it, the story was that Elizabeth Warren had been claiming to be a Native American for her whole career. And she didn't just like say it once or twice. Like this bitch wrote a Native American cookbook. And she was, this is true, she was uh, listed as Harvard Law's first ever female professor of color. And Donald Trump just decided to troll the shit out of her. And he didn't know anything. Like, he didn't have any insight or information. He's just Trump. He runs off instinct. And he was just like, that bitch looks white. And so he just decided that every single day he was gonna call her Pocahontas. And it drove her fucking crazy. He trolled her into taking a DNA test. And she took it. She didn't have to take it. No one put a gun to her head. He just made her so angry that she wasn't thinking straight and she took it. He, he, uh, he said at a press conference, he goes, I will give Elizabeth Warren a million dollars if she takes a DNA test. And she took it. She took it and she made a video about it and put it on the internet. And she was like, I took the DNA test, Donald Trump. You owe me a million dollars. And then the next day, the reporters came up to Donald Trump and they were like, hey, Elizabeth Warren took the DNA test. Are you gonna give her a million dollars? And he was like, no. <laughs> and then they just moved on. Like, that was it. Like, even the reporters were like, I mean, it's not a legally binding contract. We can't make him give her a million dollars. And we got other shit to talk about. So they moved on. And Elizabeth Warren was just left having taken a DNA test in front of the world for no reason. And she did not do good on that DNA test. She did not do very good. 
she was so excited about getting the million dollars that she completely like didn't think about the fact that her score was bad. Like really, really bad. She was less than one one thousandth Native American. Less than one one thousandth. And she's been claiming she was a Native American her whole life. And then she put up one one thousandth. You can't do that, right? You can't be one one thousandth Native American and say you're a Native American. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you can. But if you can, then we should all be able to play by those rules, you know? Like, this is true, okay? Uh, me and my wife, we took a DNA test. We did the Ancestry.com tests, and we found this out. We didn't know this, and this is true. We found out, as it turns out, my wife is 2% Northern African. Yeah, I almost left her. Uh, it, was, it was a tough day in our marriage, I'll tell you that much. So you never told me this shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding about that part, but she is 2% Northern African. That part is true. So that means my daughter is 1% Northern African, okay? Now 1% is a lot more than 1 1,000th. <laughs> 10 times more if my math holds up. Double check me when you get home, but it's more. So fine, Elizabeth Warren, you're a Native American, but I am raising a black girl. So don't, don't laugh at me. You have no idea the challenges of raising a black girl in today's white supremacist society. <laughs> hey man, New York City, you guys are the fucking best for coming out tonight. I love you guys all. Viva Gas Digital. Have a good night. Thank you.